During the last month, did you have some nights when you had trouble falling asleep? What if I tell you that the moon is the culprit? That the moon has the ability to delay your sleep and make it shorter on specific nights of the lunar month? Sounds esoteric, right? Well, then think about our ancestors. They were hunting, fishing, and gathering. They knew that their survival depended on how much food they collected, but they also knew they could only collect it until the end of daylight. After that, the dawn twilight, the dusk twilight, represented the unavoidable end of daily activity. But then once a month, some of their evenings would be specifically illuminated by the moon. Wouldn't it be foolish not to take advantage of those free lead nights. For the last uh, nine years, my laboratory has been studying sleep in communities of the Tobacuan people that live in Northern Argentina. Some of these communities still have no access to electricity and they represent a unique window to observe, to measure sleep under natural light. In one of my field trips, I was talking to Miguelito, one of the family leaders, and he told me that a few nights ago when it, it was still hot and there was a bright moon in the sky, he had gone swimming with his wife in the river. And I thought, wow, that's very interesting. I asked Miguelito, so what else goes on on moonlit nights? And he was full of stories. Some of his own, some from his grandparents, and some from the Tobacco mythology, where the moon has a very prominent role. Moonly nights are nights of fishing and hunting, and there are nights of higher social as well as sexual activity. And it turns out that according to the Tobacco mythology, the moon is a male figure, and every Tobacco woman has her first, has her first inescapable amorous relationship with the moon. And that night is marked by the first menstruation. So we were so fascinated by these rich stories that one day we decided to take a look at this. Could we actually measure the impact of the moon on nocturnal human activity and sleep? Indeed, after a few years of research, we found that on the nights leading to full moon, Sleep starts later, and it's about one hour shorter than on the nights leading to the new moon. Why the nights leading to the full moon? Well, it turns out that everywhere on Earth, it is only during these nights that, that moonlight is available at the, end of, at the end of the evening and beginning of the night, allowing people to extend their daily activity. And it was only on those nights that we found, found that sleep started later and lasted less. Now, these moonly evenings that have likely allowed our ancestors to extend their daily activity when they had no sources of artificial light have been present throughout the 300,000 years of human evolution. So let's imagine that the power of these moonly nights to curtail sleep was so strong that eventually a biological process that would keep us awake during those nights was selected by evolution. And it's now part of human biology. If this was the case, then could we still be under the monthly power of the moon on our sleep? Indeed, we found that the shortening of sleep and later sleep before the full moon nights was present not only the Tobacco communities that had no access to electricity, but also in those communities that had 24 seven access to electric light and lived in a relatively urban environment. We wonder, would this effect still be a present in highly urbanized communities like the city of Seattle or Basel? 
And we were amazed when we confirmed that that was the case. The effect was still there. We found that university students living in Seattle and taking classes in Seattle had the same delayed and shorter sleep on the nights leading to full moon as Miguelito and his family had in one of the most remote areas of Northern Argentina. Now, how can this be? Well, we still don't know, but we do know that the moon exposes us not only to nocturnal light, but also to changes in gravity that are manifested as, as tides. And these gravity changes are maximal during the new and the full moon, but only during the full moon, they occur during the evening. And it is our working hypothesis that this increased gravity pull during the evening makes us more sensitive to the light that keeps us awake during the evening. This light could be moonlight if you live in a place without access to artificial light, but it could be electric light if you live in a place like Seattle or Basel. So if you find yourself eyes wide open and turning in bed for a few nights on the next month, think about the fact that the moon has been keeping humans awake for thousands and thousands of years. And that this may be part of your human nature, that no matter how built your, your artificial environment is, how thick your curtains are, you may still be under the monthly power of the moon. Embrace that power. Take advantage of that sleeplessness. Think about its putative evolutionary role. Check whether your partner is equally moonstruck and don't miss the opportunity for a unique intimate night. And then when the moon lets you, have a good night of sleep. Thank you.